Let's if talk you about go to Gettysburg, if you go to Gettysburg, there's a whole exhibit. Oh I, I just, I'm just telling you, if you go there, and there's a, you know, or Williamsburg, you know, any, like a lot of times. A lot of bergs. A lot of any, yeah. you pick a burg. I'm just telling you, when you go to these bergs and you see like what what people fought in Civil War for, it literally was for the the pursuit of life, liberty, and you know, to, to do one game parlor. All right. There you go, Matthew, over <laughs> an incredible speech that uplifted, I'm sure, at least at least four to seven people to go and vote who otherwise wouldn't have yesterday. That Big voting percent. day. Yeah, I've been, I've been interviewed with all the political channels, uh, getting <laughs> yeah, my, getting yeah, my yeah. Uh, reaction to all the election news. <gasps> yeah, Crazy. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, Keeping listen, with well, the we, uh, we await the results of elections in many races throughout the country, but one, real. one election has been settled, and that is our midseason fantasy wards, the... Yes. Um, the happy hours. This is the one that America has really been oh, waiting for. Oh, thousand percent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I couldn't vote in those elections yesterday because I'm an Australian, but, but I could vote a, in what's this. A, what's a good name for the award? Is it the happy hours? The happies? You know, the they happies. want a happy? The, the happies? happies. The, the peacockies? No, that's bad. That's, that's real bad. Don't, don't go peacockies. Yeah, don't go peacockies. I kind of like the peacockies. No, I think it's the happies. I think it's got to be the happies. Let's start the off. Peacocky goes to? Come on. Peacocky goes. No, we can't do that. We absolutely why can't, can't we do, do that. that. Explain to me no, why we can't do that. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, Matthew. Break it down. No, I mean, it, just I mean, it makes me it. chuckle I mean, every like, time. Right, exactly. I mean, you see right there. Like, the I mean, peacock, we yeah. are on peacock. The NBC's. Right, exactly. There's a proud peacock. Yeah. My fantasy team, one of my fantasy teams is called the proud peacocks. All right. We absolutely have to move on to this first award, the Fantasy I MVP. Feel like you know, my old show, I used to have puppets. Yeah. What if, what if, uh, what, could we get somebody in a peacock costume? Pe peacocky the peacock? All right. Yeah, we could do that, Matthew. All right. But first, let's talk Fantasy MVP nominees. Sure. No surprises here. Josh Allen leading the league in points per game from a fantasy perspective. He's QB1. Austin Eckler, a friend of the show, he's RB1. Uh, to Stefan Diggs, Tyreek Hill, and also Travis Kelsey, who I feel like perennially is among these nominees had we done but, this in the past. Yeah, you know, and the interesting thing here is is that fantasy MVP can be defined so many different ways. Like, is it the guy that's scoring the most points, right, Josh Allen? Yeah. Or is it the guy that's scoring the most points that was the best value, right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Josh Allen was the number one quarterback picked in every single. But you think about Tyreek Hill, right, yeah. who was drafted. People were concerned. He's going from Mahomes to Tua. I was one of them. Like, I think I had Tyreek Hill at wide receiver eight. Like, he's still an elite talent. Still not bad. But, but right. But it's not like I was – he wasn't number one wide receiver in fantasy, which is, you know, what he is. You know, he's, he's wide receiver three so far on a points-per-game basis. So, lower – I had him lower than what he's turned out to be. He's been nothing short of fantastic. Yeah. The thing with Tyreek as well is that he was banged up with that quad. So, it was about two weeks there where you weren't at full strength and he's still doing what he's doing. Uh, I was talking to a friend yesterday. I, would, I think Tyreek Hill is the best non-quarterback in the NFL right now alongside Aaron Donald and yeah, Mike Evans. He is yeah. on pace to break yeah. Calvin Johnson's single-season receiving yards record. Yep. And he's going to... Calvin Johnson, I mean, like... He may Megatron. not even he may not even need the extra game to do it as well because he's on that type. And of can pace. you see it slow it down? Slowing down, you really can't. Could see it speeding up because <laughs> right. he had the quad. So I think that yeah, he is clearly the the guy. Right, and Let's, then you've got you you know obviously Kelsey because the tight end a scarcity as well. Diggs been fantastic. He's had ninety more yards and in, in six of eight games so far this year. Seven receiving touchdowns, tied for the most. Um, but uh, the winner for me is friend of the podcast, friend of the show. Austin Eckler, right? Wow. I mean, he's not only the number one running back in fantasy, but he's almost four points per game better than the number two running back so far this season. Five straight games with 20 or, four or more fantasy points. He's on pace for 127 receptions, which would be an NFL record for a running back. He also came on our show. Yeah, I was going to say, did he win the award because he came on the show? I'm not I haven't above, seen Josh Allen I, on the half I want to be very clear about this. A lot of people are like about integrity in elections. I can be bought. <laughs> I can absolutely be. I'm just be putting that out there. I can be bought. I, there's no integrity here. No. A thousand percent. Not. But the other thing is, is just in a year in which so many big name running backs have disappointed. Yes. We'll so talk about some of them coming up. To me, as great as Hill and Diggs have, have been, there's been production at other uh, positions as well, same at quarterback. For me, Eckler, that's why I chose Eckler. Yep, and Eckler, he was your ride or die last season, and here is Austin Eckler talking about how that was the sole reason that he is where he is today. 
Austin, you were Matthew Berry's ride or die last season. Were you, number one, were you aware of that? And two, did it play a part of your RB3 finish last season and RB1 overall performance this season? That's you a know, big I, title. I'm sure I'm sure I saw it a few times. Uh, there's a lot of people that were, you know, you know, riding the train of Austin just because I was scoring touchdowns. And so, you know, I appreciate all the love. That's why I do all these different shows for fantasy. That's why I give so much uh, love back to the community. That's one of the reasons anyway. And so I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Matthew. And uh, even this year, man, I've, I've been feeling the support. That's why, I've, you know, I gave you a follow. You know, I'm, I, now I follow the show. Now, you know, I've been I've been in your comment section a couple of times, commenting back to people uh, that, you, that you've mentioned uh, when you've mentioned me and things like that. So I, I'm a fan as well. Great victory speech from Austin Eckler. A lot better than Will Smith's at the Oscars last year. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Good job, no, by Austin that, Eckler. Then he, he, um, maybe not the hero we wanted, but the hero we need. Yes, That's absolutely. Austin yeah. I think um, you used that line two days in a row. I like yeah, it. I'm gonna Wonder who would have been tomorrow as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow. It'll be Kyle Pitts. Yep, All right, let's maybe. jump to the next award, which is Best Value Pick. As we look at the nominees, headlined by Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, who's been QB6, wasn't one of the top 10 quarterbacks drafted. Josh Jacobs, the much maligned Josh Jacobs, slowed down a little bit lately, but he has vastly exceeded expectations. Ramondre Stevenson, who we talked about a lot preseason. Alan Lazard, who sneakily in that offense in Green Bay has been producing. And then Tyler Lockett, who I think everyone thought was going to fall back with Geno Smith. Turns out he's only I mean, upgraded at quarterback. The truth is, is any Seahawk you could put on that list, you yeah. know, in terms of Geno Smith and teams of DK, Lo uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett as well. Who's, Ken Walker. You know, a, a thousand percent. Like, just no one thought the Seahawks offense was going to be what they've been. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe not him. But, right, I mean, like, you know, on the season, he's wide receiver 18. You know, he had a preseason ADP of wide receiver 42 when you mentioned Tyler Lockett. And, yeah, like, on a points-per-game basis – Alan Lazard is wide receiver 14. It's unbelievable. I mean, that's a guy who was going as wide receiver 39, right? I mean, like, for as bad as the Packers' offense have been and has been awful, Alan Lazard continues to produce. He keeps scoring touchdowns. He's scored in every game this year that he's played except for two. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Lawrence, let's talk about Tua Tagovailoa. I know you were kind of a Tua stand preseason, but has he exceeded even your expectations? I love me some Tua. <laughs> I know. That's why I set you up for it. Love him, right? Yeah, so, yeah. All these guys on the uh, Dolphins offense, Tyreek, two of they all exceeded expectations. I said, hey, he, he could play. Uh, hey, I got him at quarterback nine. But this, like, this is this offense is automatic. So it's definitely, uh, he's definitely deserving to be in this group here of he, uh, best value picks. There's no question he's the fifth best quarterback in, uh, I'm sorry, the sixth best quarterback on a points per game basis so far this year. He went as quarterback 22. C tremendous value, but obviously there's a lot of depth at quarterback. There's been a lot of value yes. at quarterback this year. Josh Jacobs deserves a mention here. Like, this is a guy that I didn't like coming into the preseason. I wasn't alone, neither did the Raiders. They refused to pick <laughs> up his fifth-year option. Yes. Like, it feels like everyone hated Josh Jacobs. I've hated him for a number of years. I've been right for a number of years. This year, I was dead wrong on Josh Jacobs, who, even though he slowed down a little bit, is still the seventh best running back on a points per game basis so far this year. He was going as running back 23. Most people had him as kind of a, like a, oh, uh, I've run out, you know, I've got to get a running back. I, I went early on uh, wide receivers and tight ends. Okay, Fairly fine, I'll him. take Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Like, no one went into the, yeah. the, the, the draft targeting Josh Jacobs. Like, you rostered him because you had to. <laughs> yep. Because you're like, all right, well, he qualifies at running back. He'll probably get some run. Um, and he's been a revelation here. Uh, but none of those guys, as great as they all are, is the winner. The winner, it's Ramondre Stevens' season. Yes. Agreed. Everyone Agreed. knows. Yeah, the, uh, the quintessential RB0 guy preseason, and now he's just petite. Damien Harris getting hurt and being banged up as help, but even before that he was providing value, and now he's looking like certainly a top 10 running back the rest of the way. He's been the best, the sixth best running back in fantasy since week number three. He's had 16 or more fantasy points now in six of the last seven games. He's running back nine now on the season on a points per game basis. Um, they're on a bye this week, uh, the Patriots are, but when he comes back, like he'll continue to be a big part of an offense that has struggled to move the ball consistently this year, but the one thing that has been rock solid is Ramondre Stevenson. Yep. So he is the winner of the Peacocky. Yes, hey. yeah. All right, let's quickly move on and get negative and talk about the biggest busts, mm. which are headlined by, spoiler alert, we know who's going to win this, 
award. Actually, no, we don't. It's not the guy I thought. <laughs> but I was, uh, Jonathan Taylor, who has taken number one overall, uh, he has been RB24 on a points per game basis. He's not delivered, and it's not entirely been his fault, but he hasn't played that well either when he's been healthy. Najee Harris, who we talked about earlier in the show, uh, he was taking us RB6. He's been RB28. DJ Moore, who experienced a little bit of renaissance, but still cost them that game, yeah, yeah. and uh, came back down to earth last week against the Bengals. Alan Robinson, who is one of the poster boys for uh, fantasy failures this year, unfortunately. A little, some signs of life lately. And then, of course, Kyle Pitts, uh, who Lawrence Jackson knows all too well about Matthew Berry. Yeah, I mean, I, look, all the, again, fantasy bus is lot, not only about lack of production, but also, again, what you cost, what it costs you on draft day to acquire that yes. person. So, uh, you know, it's not only that. Kyle Pitts has been bad. It's the fact that you took him at tight end three and that, you know, on a points per game basis, he's tight end 16, right? You think about hmm. Najee Harris. I mean, he's running back 28, fine, but this is a guy that went at the end of the first round, right? You know, you're not using a first round pick on running back 28. Allen Robinson is wide receiver 61 on a points per game basis, and he was going, you know, uh, as a top 20 wide receiver here. Um, Jonathan Taylor. You know, Jonathan Taylor's had some moments and he's been hurt, yeah. but just the fact that he went number one overall in pretty much every draft, Lawrence, Hurts. He, he's got to be uh, he's got to be in this mix as well. Yeah, he's got to be in the mix. But man, that guy Kyle Pitts, who I was saying, get him in the third round, right? Tight end one this year. You can't be tight end sixteen on a points per game basis. That's like being wide receiver eighty eight. Yeah, you know, so that that's tough in its own right. Yeah, well, I almost butchered it by doing the La La Land thing of reading out Jonathan Taylor as the winner, but Jonathan Taylor is not the winner, Matthew. No, Harris. Kyle Pitts is the winner. I mean, yeah, DJ Moore on. has uh, DJ Moore's kind of re resurrected his season a little bit yes, last couple yes, of games yes. here, but I think it's Kyle Pitts just because of like when you are drafting a tight end that high, they because of the scarcity of the position and because you know there's Ooh. most people are going running back or wide receiver there. Yeah, like it, it's it's not only that you drafted him as a third rounder, but because you bypassed other positions. Like he killed you in two different ways. Like you could have gotten this production, you know, from a tight end much later. And so that's like you when you draft a tight end that high, you have to nail that tight end. Yes, sir. Like you, that pick really has to come through for you. And this is a guy that's had under 30 receiving yards in six of eight games, right? He's had five different games with five or fewer fantasy points, like five different weeks where he's just absolutely murdered you. Um, Here's some of the guys that are averaging more fantasy points per game, just to talk about, like, you know, um, uh, like Tyler Conklin, Ooh. Hayden Hurst, mm. Bob Tunyon, Who? Evan Ingram. Oh, no. <laughs> right. I mean, none of these guys were drafted among the top 15 <laughs> tight ends, all of them averaging more fantasy points per game than Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I uh, completely disagree with this. This To me, this is choosing crash over Brokeback Mountain for best picture. I uh, think Jonathan Taylor should be the winner here, but that's okay. We can disagree uh, on the peacockies. Let's All go right, to good. top Thank waiver you, wire pickup nominees. Headlined by the immortal Justin Fields, top five quarterback going forward, arguably, certainly top seven. The great Geno Smith, the comeback player of the year favorite Jamal Williams who has thrived in the absence of DeAndre Swift and has kept the thrive going even with Swift back. Jacoby Myers who doesn't get a lot of love but it's just just keeps on producing and then David Njoku who's been injured but when he's been healthy uh, has delivered well over expectations. Lawrence Jackson. Yeah so you know you got a couple of quarterbacks here and like and, and like we know we know quarterbacks we could get those dime a dozen. But I like Geno Smith here. People weren't drafting Geno Smith. People were drafting like Justin Fields late, hoping that he would do what he's doing now, and now he's doing it. But Geno Smith and Geno Smith has been doing it for pretty much the whole season. Justin Fields came along over the past month and has looked excellent. But uh, Geno Smith looks good here. Jamal Williams is just a thief, and uh, you know. David Njoku kind of got hurt, so that yep. kind of pushed him back a little. Jacoby Meyer has been, uh, been much better than I think people expected here, but the winner is Justin Fields. Yep. Sorry, he's the winner of the Peacocky. I understand uh, <laughs> where your vote <laughs> went. Gotta stop it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lawrence, but the fact of the matter is, is that when you can find a QB1 on the waiver wire, which is what Justin Fields is since week five, he's the oh, third yeah. best quarterback in fantasy. He's now had six straight 
with 17 or more fantasy points. Um, I'm his QB4 this week. He makes the love list once again. Uh, he's he's an elite fantasy quarterback. Yes. And when you think about the guys like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or Matthew Stafford, some of these guys that have just fallen off, how many big-name quarterbacks just haven't produced in big numbers? You know, it's it's been a disappointing year for Dak Prescott. I mean, mm-hmm. like, honestly, a lot of big-name quarterbacks have not produced in the kind of ways that Justin Fields has. So uh, he it's a controversial winner. There's no question. I understand. I don't think it's I controversial. Heard, I think I, that's I, a I'm not mad at no, it. It's I, a new day, no, baby. I'm, I'm hearing Justin reports, Fields, let's I heard, go. I hear reports that Lawrence is going to go to court. He's going to no. challenge the results. <laughs> it's no, Daniel no, no. Day-Lewis in there. He's not accepting the results of this election. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Fields is from Georgia. It's all good. Yeah. All right, all right, let's close enough. out with best performing rookie nominees. Headlined by Damian Pierce, who has been RB14 on the season. Ken Walker surging, and I think is probably going to surpass Damian Pierce by the end of the year. Chris Olave, who just keeps on cooking regardless of his quarterback. Garrett Wilson, who has shown signs of life with his brother Zach at quarterback. And George Pickens, uh, who hasn't really delivered what we want, but has had his moments. And uh, let's take a look at the MGM odds for Offensive Rookie of the Year, where Ken Walker, despite having a bit of a yards deficit to Damian Pierce, he is surging on a Seattle team, which I think is the best story in the NFL this year. He's the even money favorite for that award. How, how can you say he's the, the, he, that's the best story in the NFL this year when you've got a guy who was shot okay. multiple times fair, on that fair. list? Yeah, but he's not RB5, though. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> this is true. I but he right. was shot. Yes. That's true. Brian Robinson is the best story. Do you understand? That's I got true. a hangnail this morning and I almost didn't make it in. You know, like, he was shot. And Fair. he's playing professional Fair. football, Lawrence. Shout out to he Brian should, He should be the comeback you player know, of the year. I stubbed my toe and I'm done for a week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you understand? Yep. No, All I'm right. with you Good. there. All so right. the winner is... Who gets who get the, the peacocky goes to? The peacocky goes to Ken <laughs> Walker of the Seattle Seahawks. KW3. The second best story in the NFL this year. And this, I think, is more of a projecting forward what he's going to do. He is the closer. That's the nickname I've uh, coined for Ken Walker. I'm not sure if he likes it as much as no. Ray most that like. Six of his seven touchdowns have come in the fourth quarter. He is the closer. He's Mariano he, Rivera. He's Ken, Mariano Ken Walker. Walker. Yeah, Ken, Ken Walker league winner is Enter his official Sandman. name. And by the way, just thinking about the the totality of this uh, category, Damian Pierce, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, George Payne, like the, much more rookie fantasy production than I think we've seen. By the way, yeah. if he hadn't gotten hurt, Brees Hall is in this conversation in yeah. a massive way as well. So yeah. just an incredible rookie class that KW3 and the Seahawks, who we love, are uh, are a big <laughs> The music is kicking Matthew Barry winner. off the Oscars. I'm being, We're I'm going being to dragged break. off. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.